0.8 megahertz. We have uninterrupted supply here because we have backups. So even if there is a light power issue, even for a second, our systems don't stop because the backup is 24 seven running on backup all the time. Now, having said all of this, uh, in any live webinar, uh, videos can, and all the videos also are downloaded, so we don't stream them live. We have taken all care from our end. Now, if things do slow down, if there's a glitch, it could be at either end A. We always know when it's from our end, yeah? So we know that. We trust that your systems are running on almost optimum kind of speed. And uh, we can also share with you that we are running on about 90% of the 5.8 megahertz because we're getting live updates on the speed we are so we also have that happening yeah we've Great. taken all care uh, let's cross our fingers uh, and if if we if you lose connection or if if we drop out ladies and gentlemen please hang in there we should be back up in about half a minute at best if that happens if that were to happen we assume all that should not happen yeah. all right so right. let's get kicked off uh, uh, you want to just probably, you know, for those who are new on this webinar, you will see there's a hand kind of an icon. There is chat feature. And as of now, you all are muted and that's intentional. Uh, if you do have a question, please raise your hand. And we do have Q&A as well, but that will be opened up only during polling. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's, we should be good, love. Yeah. We Anything else? Is, is this no, good? No, no, that, I, right? think, I think this should be fine. So, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's begin. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the webinar. I would like to kind of maybe uh, take the audience a little bit back to yeah. the previous uh, networking and, and executive presence. Uh, and okay. in that spirit, I want you to kind of use your chat feature. I'm sure all of you are familiar with that. And, uh, and answer kind of this one question for us. Mm -hmm. So what was the major takeaway? I mean, from all of the things you probably experienced and the insights that you got. What was a major takeaway from your executive presence session? And feel free to kind of, uh, you know, uh, type this in on, on the chat as we, uh, as you, as you get the, the answers. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So go ahead and do so it. I'll give you 30, those, 30 seconds. Yeah. Those, those of them who obviously attended it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I assume, you know, some of you may have missed it uh, yet uh, for those who attended, take a minute to reflect and yeah. yeah and and let's just, know. yeah. Uh, you know, just one takeaway for you. So we are referring to the sessions that you all attended um, very recently, a week, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So we're getting some answers here, li uh, listening to the other. Okay. Tonality. All right. Great. Gravitas, Gravitas is key. <coughs> Concreteness and congruence, okay. It's really, it's, it's, uh, it's delightful to know that um, uh, the, you, you are uh, sort of uh, remembering and recollecting. No, no, no. no. All right. So um, let's ask a second question and then we will respond back to uh, all, the, uh, all the feedback we're getting on, on, on this. Okay. So what, the second question is, what connections do you see uh, between executive presence and negotiations? And I understand that, uh, uh, you, you, you're not yet to go through the webinar, but uh, pre-webinar mm -hmm. uh, and what you know about negotiations, uh, do you see any connections between what you've learned in the past? So, okay, yes. Um, yes, uh, what, Sanjay what, says what, yes. What could be those connections, a word or two, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, a little, you know, little so bit of what particularly you, you yeah, think this is uh, a, connects the two. Mm -hmm. To achieve win-win, yes, executive sure. helps in negotiations. So, okay. so great. So Rajiv, I think that's really true. Uh, executive presence helps in negotiation, um, definitely. And I think you will see more intersections and more overlay when, when we progress uh, through this two-part webinar series uh, between what you experience in the executive presence and uh, negotiation uh, uh, webinars. Because I think there are very direct connections and, and deep i think you have a great example of the the software the software, software hardware, hardware and, and so, analogy for the engineers on the on the call right. so no it's a fact 
I think you all have got it right. It seems you all are pretty aligned then to this program because you all are saying you have to have the ability to convince the other party. That means you need some, uh, you know, uh, uh, presence and tonality to negotiate better. Now, yes, negotiate negotiation has two parts to it. Uh, you have the hardware and the software. Software and the hardware both have equal weighting, if not one or more of the other, they have equal weighting. Software is the tonality, the voice, the pitch, the articulation, the communication, all of this is your software, yeah? The, 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 the conversation is the software. The hardware is the depth of knowledge, the data, the information that you have, all of that is the hardware. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is very important to be mindful and as we go forward in this webinar, you will also, we will be reinforcing, highlighting the importance of each. We will take these stops, we will practice, we will get uh, more uh, to, to know more about what this is, how the impact of both software and hardware, yeah? And Great. So Lavi, yeah. isn't it also a fact, just for the interest mm -hmm. and our experience mm -hmm. and working globally now, multiple geographies, People do, uh, do uh, feel, I believe, and they believe that it's really the knowledge and the information that does it. What is your take on it here? You think it's true? People still believe that. No, I think, I, I think uh, you know, you can have all the, the, the bona fide information, the knowledge, the expertise. In the world. Uh, you, yeah, you might be you know, extremely right in your position, or at least you may feel so. But I think uh, this is a human relationship, uh, human interaction, and you can't really have those uh, interactions without devoid of emotion, be, uh, devoid of your emotional intelligence. Uh, so I think, I think as we move through the, the process today, I think it'll become clearer and clearer that those skills uh, will be paramount in an effective negotiation. Right? All right. Okay. So, so I think that's, that's uh, uh, a, group, a good point. Uh, so let me just uh, move on. Uh, into our, our next session. So th this is uh, uh, a little bit on kind of getting a working definition for ourselves on what is negotiation and what is uh, uh, what is not, right? So what we were going to do um, is, Deep and I were going to do a little bit of a role play to kick off things. And um, so let me just give you the context of that. So what I want uh, the participants to do is that at the end of the role play, um, let us know whether scenario one or scenario two, uh, so we, we're trying to make a distinction here between bargaining and negotiation. So one role play will be a bargaining one and the other one will be the negotiation one. We won't say which one it is. Uh, so after we do the role play, we keen uh, through the chat feature for us to uh, know what you thought, whether yeah. one or two was the, uh, yeah. the culprit for bargaining sure. and, and uh, mm -hmm. the other one for negotiation. So sure. let's, let's go there. Do you want to start it? So the context is that um, I am uh, a, a client in an European, uh, European client uh, talking to a solution provider in India, which will be represented by Deep uh, for, uh, for role play clarity. I, I shall be called Klaus in this one. And Deep German. Will, yeah. Yeah, German. German, so I guess. German and uh, and, 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 and uh, Deep will be... Uh, uh, deep, right? Sure. So yeah. let's let's begin. So here's uh, the first uh, role play. All right. Good morning, uh, Deep. Uh, uh, Klaus here. I uh, just got your proposal a couple of days ago. Um, I've been going through it, and uh, you know, I you know, you've, you've obviously uh, got the gist of what I my requirements are very clearly. Uh, however, I must say, and I'm very candid and frank and straightforward with you, your rate card is just inconsistent is the word I would use uh, from what I have received from other solution providers uh, for this particular piece of work as well as others. Uh, you, you are at this point at least 3x higher than what I expect and then that's just a, a non-starter for me. Uh, uh, Mr. Klaus, thanks for being candid. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if you have felt like that. Yeah, I'm sorry if you felt like that. What is it you want from us? So, well, I, I think, I, you know, market parity is what I'm looking for so that I can uh, uh, approve this and, and get working on this really quickly. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm, I'm looking what for. What do you propose then? You know, when you said 3x, uh, it tells me I need to bring it down yeah, at, yeah. Uh, to x. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay. Um, um, looking at it as a long-term thing, maybe we could do it. Um, um, okay, let, let me speak. And uh, I think um, we should be able to do it. I'll still need to just sort of speak to the management and come back. 
So, so could you, do you have a price? So I think we have quoted $150 uh, for the hour. Yeah, for, for the skill that we are talking. Yeah, yeah, I, I think if you, you know somewhere on the fifty ballpark would be would be what I'm looking for. That would be okay. a uh, if if you can if you can meet me there, I can definitely uh, cut cut a PO tomorrow. Is that what you've got from other service providers? Yeah, that, that, that market, that's that, what I'm that, that's what I'm seeing. Okay, 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 I'll come back. Okay, thank you. So that was uh, that was a one play. That was one, one. play. Uh, we're going to do this again. A uh, different approach. Perfect. So yeah. let's let's try this one now. Good morning, Deep. Uh, Klaus here. Um, I've uh, received your proposal. Everything seems to be in order. We captured our requirements very well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I got to, however, be extremely frank, cut to the chase here. Uh, the one thing that I had you know, great concerns about and, and, and having <coughs> great difficulty digesting is your rate card and, and the prices you're quoting for your resources. They are just not in line with what I consider to be market and, mm -hmm. and is not consistent with the other prices uh, for, for rates I have gotten from other solution providers mm -hmm. in India. So there is a massive disconnect there. Your price is at least 3x, mm -hmm. 3x higher than, than everybody else. Sure. So Klaus, uh, I, I appreciate where you're coming from. Uh, yet, uh, I'm fascinated uh, by, by the 3x that you're saying. Because uh, we are also in the market, Klaus, uh, for the skills that you're looking at, we also had some assurances in place, right? So while it may look like 3x or 2x, what have you. Yet, we also kept in mind your ask, what you were expecting out of a service provider, because we have enough experience, uh, and, and this is experience from others, other clients like you coming to us and saying about their experiences with others, wherein uh, if, if a skill is either not available or not well resourced, uh, the, the time lags and the downtime, uh, and especially in your case where the product launch is so important for you, Right? So we have in place, that's an assurance that there will be no downtime, even if that skill that we have, and we have unique skills for you, we have these niche skills, right? We do, we do understand that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's true. I mean, I, we are looking for a very kind of nuanced uh, product yeah. here to be so, built. So having said that, Klaus, we are giving you an assurance that A, your product launch will happen on time or before time. That's an assurance. Yet we also, please understand, we, we pay uh, we pay more than market to retain our own talent because we are getting the best of the best. So we have rock stars in our team, Klaus. And I think you've gone through the profiles. Now, I'm not sure if you're really comparing oranges to oranges or apples to apples or apples to oranges, yet I can empathize with you, uh, but I am going to come up with assurances. So we're going to give you so much more so, in the three so I, I, If I'm reading between the lines here, Deep, uh, yeah. are you saying that you're willing to kind of contractually bind yourself to assuring us that there is no downtime, um, as well as uh, you know, uh, are happy to kind of take a, uh, a contractual position uh, against kind of defects in, in quality of the product that you're supplying. Uh, if that is the case, then I, I think we have uh, a ro room here for for uh, engagement, for the engagement. And I would also like to see, and you could take this back to your team. Uh, you know, some kind of point where we, you know, we try a certain rate for a month. Uh, and then, you know, we have some kind of a clawback or something like that so that you can demonstrate to us that you are capable because we, you know, you, you are a new vendor to us that you have the capability to, 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 to do this. So, so Klaus, my suggestion, my recommendation here would be let us come out with two or three models to, to preserve your comfort and okay. risk. Right. Let us come out. Yet, I don't feel we should be really talking about price here. We could talk of models which include speed and quality and some penalties if you like. Yes, that's exactly what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Yet I do not feel that the price should be a sticky point here because we are assuring you speed, quality, uh, and which is very key for you at this time, you have to go to market on time. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. So uh, in your, uh, that, those are the two, uh, so A and B. So if you could go ahead and uh, tell us in the chat. Which was bargaining. Which was bargaining and what, which one was. So first, okay, okay, Krishna, so. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the first one is bargaining. The second is negotiation. Anybody else who uh, A is bargaining. bargaining? Okay, okay. Okay, great. So, so uh, I guess I, I guess, uh, the, give, it, I guess the, it's, no, there's no, not, uh, too hard, you know. not too hard. There's no rocket science to this. You're right. A is bargaining. And yeah. Uh, yeah. what is the question here for them? Yeah, I think what I think what we were uh, what we were hoping to understand uh, is that you know uh, the bargaining is 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 kind of like you know when you go to the Monday and you know you haggle with someone and you just uh, your whole proposition based on on a price, whereas negotiation obviously has to be based on perceived value. Uh, 
And, and so you will talk a lot more about value as you move ahead in, in the webinar, but I just want to kind of, you know, set the ground here that there's very distinct differences between, you know, haggling over price and then negotiating to a, uh, to a conclusion, a mutual win-win, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A is cost-based, cost based, B is quality-based. Quality based. Thank you, Anand. And that's uh, job A, two is negotiation. Absolutely spot on. Two is negotiation. Uh, Lavi, should there be a question our audience, the participants should be asking themselves today? Uh, that uh, are there in scenarios where they end up uh, bargaining? And that could be any scenario. Mm -hmm. Lavi. So, so what I'm understanding from you is that notwithstanding the scenario, there still could be a bargaining sure. position and a negotiation. Yeah, sure. And, and what would yeah. you recommend? Uh, come what may, what would you recommend? What should ideally a person be doing? I think, you know, some things are not worth negotiating. Sometimes, you know, sure. you, you, you have certain things, it's just, you know, it's a simple uh, transaction, transactional thing. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give a resource or not? I mean, yeah. you know, you don't have to get into a protracted negotiation about that. Mm -hmm. If you have someone available, you say yes. If not, you say no. And you offer alternatives. So I think that's just, you know, so... We're not saying that bargaining is bad and negotiating is better. I think the context and, and the objectives and the outcomes, perceived outcomes, are, are what determine which, which you use. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, this is about negotiation because that is a lot more, uh, you know, that's, that's what the webinar is about and that's for more, more tangible, much more, uh, you know, value driven uh, conversations you're having with, uh, with, your, so, with your clients. And so just a thought here, Lavi, then I think for the benefit of the participants, um, uh, when you negotiate, you are mindful of the contract, the outcome and relationship both. I think when you're bargaining, uh, it's more uh, the contract and the outcome of the task and not relationship. And that could be a key one, yes, isn't it? Yes. So when you're mindful of both, then you must negotiate. Yeah, where right. relationship is as important as contract but where it's only the outcome and it's not a long-term piece, I guess, people end up that's bargaining. Right, right. So, okay. so I think it's, it's, a, it's the adoption of a certain mindset, right? So I think, uh, you know, you go from, you know, negotiator, you go from being kind of an expert that says, you know, it's one or the other to, you know, exploring possibilities, options uh, okay. with, with people. Uh, you know, saying you understand in bargaining is just kind of a, a quick way of saying, okay, I get it and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of lower my price to, Showing that you truly understand, but then trying to work out a, a mutual win-win. That's negotiation. That's negotiation. So you can see that from the front to the two. So a lot more dialogue. A lot, a lot more dialogue. Conversation. A lot more interfacing. A lot more Trust should be a big one. Trust is a huge Trust thing. Trust is yeah. a huge one. Okay. And as we move on, I think all of these will be further cemented sure. by some examples. But okay. okay, so I think we got a, a decent working definition, everybody. Uh, so we're going to... Uh, yeah. So... so this is a this is something you want the participants yeah, to quickly just I think go they would have through. they would have gone through it while we were speaking uh -huh. so um, you know uh, obviously this is kind of a synopsis of the differences between the two right? and you all will be getting the deck as usual and the right. recording so you know you could uh, further uh, crystallize your learning through that later so what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick poll now that uh, we've done this uh, 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 Thing here so let's I'm gonna launch the poll and and as you guys know you know how to respond to this from previous ex, uh, experience so this is the poll quickly uh, take you know 15 20 seconds maybe and yeah. show us the answers so I guess let's take a minute take a minute um, send in your answers uh, this is really about who do you primarily negotiate with and my negotiations are mostly conducted the sort of medium, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Well, what's yes. the medium that you use? I think lobby. It's mostly virtual. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that. Yeah. I just want to call it one unless, unless it's internal. Yeah. And maybe at best, yeah. who has the luxury of face-to-face -face in person these days? I, actually, uh, many of them do. Oh, so but that could be internal. We, yeah, we, internal. Could, could, we find we'll, out. We'll yeah. yeah. We find out. That's the beauty of these polls. Okay. So uh, give me, give everybody about uh, five seconds more. Okay, and then we will end percent yeah. with customers. That's, right, that, right. that's good. So that lobby then, uh, according to the polls. So we're going to end the poll and, and share, the, share the results with you. Yeah. So okay. has everybody got a chance? I see the number still moving. Sure. Let's, let's, let's wait, wait for about a second, two seconds. Let's go. So I'm going to end the poll and then uh, uh, go ahead and share the results with everybody. So all of you have. Share uh, results. So you should be able to now see the, okay. the results. So very interesting. Uh, you know, uh, surprisingly, 
uh, you primarily negotiate with clients and customers. It's very, very good. Why would you be surprised? No, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so sometimes there's a lot of people who negotiate with each yeah, other yeah. Uh, in day to day things. But the board the audience it's, here is obviously. So, uh, what does that tell us? That uh, in our program, yeah. I think uh, it's good that we could be now aligned. And, and from our point of view, we know that it's more external. Correct. Sure. And, uh, and hence, I think that. I, uh, this webinar in particular would be very yeah. useful, for isn't it? Yes, because absolutely. this is more inclined for external right. as well. Yeah. So the the, the other interesting thing, uh, you know, sixty three percent of you doing, and also a very large number doing face to face. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of an interesting uh, dichotomy there. Mm -hmm. So the face to face, as you all know from your previous uh, webinar, allows uh, more, uh, you know, easier communication uh, when it's face to face. Obviously, because you you have the the ability to see the person and hear the person and and, and sense the person, which uh, in a phone teleconference where you don't have the visual, it becomes a lot harder. So that's the majority. So so it's really important that uh, you know the skills that you learn in executive presence on in things like tonality, you know, uh, and, and a sense of gravitas over the phone uh, plays a key role so, now in the negotiation. So Lavi, process. this could be counterintuitive, isn't it? For somebody like me who's not very good looking, I think phone works. <laughs> So there you go. So I think it's counterintuitive. I think yeah, it could be, yeah. it could yeah. be no, no, better for me. You know, yeah. some people say, hey, why did you show up? You were yeah. better on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff. So exactly. I think what you need to do is you really have to do work on however the, um, so let me just stop sharing the poll here. That's okay. Stop sharing. Oh, sorry. I think. I could uh, do that. Yeah. No, it's just. Uh, there, you go. there you go. Okay. And let's just back up. The yeah, you could close it. Okay. There we go. All right. So. Deep's going to um, ah, all right. let, tell a little story about what we are calling the yeah. camel conundrum. Uh, okay. All right. So um, I think before we get onto the story, maybe some of you have heard this story. Uh, what's important really is uh, to, to reinforce and to highlight how important are emotions mm -hmm. during negotiations. How important are emotions? How important is it for you to be centered, collected, calm, all of that, right? And of course, there's a bit of lateral thinking. So this is how the story goes. Um, and there were these uh, three brothers whose father had just died. Yeah, his father had expired and they were in a quandary. The quandary was the father left them with an asset of 17 camels to be divided in three sons. So they were there brooding and having acrimonious uh, um, uh, uh, conversations about what to do. Uh, they were at their wits end because they possibly couldn't divide 17 camels the way they had to divide. So the division was like the first son uh, was given half the camels. The second son was given one third and the third one ninth. So this is how the father left them with. Now, obviously, there was no way in the world you can divide 17 by 3 to start with. You can't even divide 17 into half. That means they would want to cut some camels. So that was the quandary. Uh, what is it they were supposed to do? So along comes, uh, along comes a, 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 a traveler. You know, they were in the desert. Along comes a traveler uh, looking for some shelter, some water. And notice the, the, how distraught the sons were. Notice that whole... Uh, uh, atmosphere of sadness or frustration when and asked what is the problem gentlemen so they explained the problem which was our father has left us with 17 camels and we are at our wits end what to do so the 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 wise man uh, who was the traveler said that's not a problem so the the sons were rather surprised by that not a problem well why don't you take my camel now you have 18 camels right so now they have 18 camels so they go but how can we keep your camel? How will you proceed? He goes, don't worry about that. So they give, gives the camel. Now they have 18 camels. Now half of 18, they, they went on to divide the 18 camels. Now, as you see, uh, half of 18 is nine camels. The second son got one third, which is six camels. And the third son got one ninth, which is two camels. Yet, now when you add it up, when you add it up, you get 17 camels. You still have 17 camels. So what did the wise man do? Went on with his camel on his way, went on on his travel. So here you go. What, what is the gist of this whole story? Yeah, I, uh, so, so Krishna, uh, you've heard the story of Denali Raman solving it for Krishna. Okay, now the fact here is 
the wise man added something which he knew would end of the day still be his. So added something, resolved the problem, i.e. lateral thinking and composure. Lateral thinking and composure. So when you're outside the event, you can think better sometimes. What that also tells you is, take yourselves out of the situation. Take yourself out of the situation and see the situation from 30,000 feet. That also helps sometimes, right, Lavi? Absolutely. Now, the only, the only, sorry, the only point here, Lavi, is the wise man didn't get his fee, right? He only got his camel back. <laughs> he didn't get his fee to, to resolve this problem. Maybe yeah? the hospitality in a hostile desert environment is yeah. his fee. <laughs> no. So you know what the wise man did? So the wise man, the word spread then, the word spread that there is a wise man who resolves great problems like these. So uh, down the line, two months down the line, there was a king. There was a king who had the same issues. The king, uh, the, the king was left with 35 camels, 35 camels by his father, who was the emperor, right? <laughs> the father died, left them with 35 camels, and the king had two other brothers, yeah. right? They had to distribute the camels Typically, one half, one third, and one ninth. Right. So guess what? They call the wise man again. But this time, the wise man thought, I have to get my fee as well. Right? So the wise man lent his camel again. They were 36. Now, Lavi, now, participants, you do your math. 36 camels, one third to one son, one half, and one ninth. Guess what? The wise man this time was left with two camels. They still got their... 35, now the wise man had his camel and one of their camel as well. They left with two camels. That's the fee. Smart man. Isn't it? So there you go. It's, it's, <laughs> That's a very good, yeah. very good one. When it's 35, you, get, you walk away with the camel. You know that? <laughs> so. Okay. So, um, so I think, uh, jokes aside, I think this really is uh, one of the key things is just, you know, keeping your emotions, uh, you know, in check maybe yeah. or, or in balance. And of course, working and thinking outside the Objectivity box. Objectivity as well. Yeah, and allow me to be box. objective about things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna actually talk about another conundrum that we we encounter in uh, in in uh, negotiations, and this is about choice. And this actually really um, we we picked this because most of your your customers are in the U.S. and you interface a lot with with. Uh, with people there. So this is a very kind of a, a bit, uh, this component of, of choice that we are uh, sharing with you today is around uh, the US uh, market. Now, China Annagar is, is a world expert, a world renowned expert on choice. Uh, her TED talk is worth listening to in its entirety and I suggest uh, you do that at, at your convenience. Uh, we're gonna share about two minutes of this with you. Um, and uh, so let me kind of set that up a little bit. I gotta switch screens a little bit. So um, please bear with me while I do that. Sure. Um, and then uh, we will tee up the- Yeah, so, uh, so uh, I think uh, she, she's talking more of choices. Uh, uh, and and uh, we want you to actually watch the watch the video and not say much as of now. Don't want to share too much, and um, I want to leave it uh, with you uh, to draw your insights first through this. So, so here we go. Here we go. Let's test this to some. One of the most interesting revelations came not from an answer to a question, but from a simple gesture of hospitality. When the participants arrived for their interview, I offered them a set of drinks: Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite seven to be exact. During the very first session, which was run in Russia, one of the participants made a comment that really caught me off guard. Oh, oh but it doesn't matter. It's all just soda, that's just one choice. I was so struck by this comment that from then on I started to offer all the participants those seven sodas, and I asked them, how many choices are these? Again and again, they perceive these seven different sodas not as seven choices, but as one choice, soda or no soda. When I put out juice and water in addition to these seven sodas, now they perceived it as only three choices, juice, water, and soda. Compare this to the diehard devotion of many Americans, not just to a particular flavor of soda, but to a particular brand. You know, Research shows repeatedly that we can't actually tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi. Of course, you and I know that Coke is the better choice. <laughs> 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 
for modern Americans who are exposed to more options and more ads associated with options than anyone else in the world, choice is just as much about who they are as it is about what the product is. Combine this with the assumption that more choices are always better and you have a group of people for whom every little difference matters and so every choice matters. But for Eastern Europeans, the sudden availability of all these consumer products on the marketplace was a deluge. They were flooded with choice before they could protest that they didn't know how to swim. When asked, what words and images do you associate with, with choice? Gregors from Warsaw said, ah, for me it is fear. There are some dilemmas, you see. I am used to no choice. Odin from Kiev said, in response to how he felt about the new consumer marketplace, it is too much. We do not need everything that is there. A sociologist from the Warsaw Survey Agency explained, the older generation jumped from nothing to choice all around them. They were never given a chance to learn how to react. And Tomas, a young Polish man, said, I do not need 20 kinds of choice. All right, um, let me just uh, go back to the slides. All right, brilliant. Okay, okay. Can, can you hear us, everybody? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, so what I think was key there um, was that you know culturally there are differences associated with uh, with choices or the plethora of choices, but for the U.S. there was some uh, some very clear things that came out of there, which was that and and this is in the whole TED talk as well, that Americans uh, in general uh, want to feel autonomy about their choices, so they need to feel free to make those choices, and they need to have multiple op options. So the, the, these are very strongly interconnected. So there has to be a plurality of choices, and then and some autonomy in making those choices. So so if you were to put this in, into kind of a negotiation paradigm and practice, what what we mean by that is that what you need to give kind of equal value choices now. The good thing is that you know choice can be the difference between a Pepsi and a Coke, but but I think the more real the choices are, you, you know, you make sure that uh, you know that option A and option B and option C are all you know equally valuable choices that they could pick, and then without being too pushy or or you know pushing them into a choice being your choice, if they feel that they can actually pick from those three and they independently made that they had the autonomy to make that choice, they feel empowered and they agree with that choice. So, so Lavi, say for me, let's, let's go with what we just saw. Mm -hmm. say, say, you know, um, I, my, my, my issue is, or what I want is to quench my thirst. Mm -hmm. Let's say I want to quench my thirst, I'm thirsty. And somebody comes and gives me a choice between Coke and Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Now that, like, like from what Lavi is saying, that leaves me with to make my own choice. It gives me that autonomy, but is it giving me the plurality? Now, plurality would be if the person offered me Coke and water, or Coke and orange juice. Right. Now that becomes a choice. Yeah, true plurality. Now that then is true plurality, true right? Yes. Is, exactly. is that what we're saying? Exactly, that's what we're saying. So, so then, if they were to relate this to their workplace, right? Uh, the yeah, how would these insights change your approach to negotiation with your U.S. client counterparts? Great question. So shall we shall we stop here and probably uh, yeah, uh, let, you know, yeah, get some uh, get some what are they yeah, saying? Yeah. So you know from from watching the video and also from the camel uh, camel conundrum. Any any insights so, on on, yeah. on especially on on choice I, for your U.S. plans? Yeah. So I think uh, the question you ask is when you're yeah. asking this question, are we really giving them choices yeah. or are we just giving them options? So is there a difference in choices and options, isn't it? Yes, there is. Options could be from your standpoint, yeah? Yeah. But they may not be a choice for the client. Correct. Yeah? Correct. So there we go. Let's open it for chat. Uh, so uh, just insights. Uh, just insights or what we could do is if you raise your hand uh, we could just open it up for that participant to talk if you want to share your insights that way 
We are happy to do that, but just let's keep about a minute for this. Yeah, lovely. Yes, 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 yes. Let's keep a minute. You, you could raise your hand. So if anyone has some insights through this, um, okay, let's then- We can move on. Move on. Okay, okay. we Great can time. always come back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oops, I, okay. okay so there, there is one, uh, one person on the chat. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Krishna says, I think it should be contextual. Sometimes we can only give options and sometimes choices. Sure. sure. I think okay. uh, Krishna, the point I think really is uh, our choices better than just giving options. I think that that's the, that's what you need to decide in the given context. Yeah. You know, exactly. would you just want to give a, you have option A or B? Uh, and options, of course, choices are also in one sense options. The point is, are you giving them autonomy and are they real choices as per, you know, what yes. we discussed? Yeah. So, so if, if a client wants to quench their thirst, would you offer, uh, would you say yeah, there's a choice between Coke and Pepsi or there's a choice between Coke, Pepsi and water? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So let's go to the, the next one, which is we are going to do a bit of a group exercise here. So um, this is essentially a, a and, and feel free to use this uh, read through this and then use the chat feature to respond but this hopefully this is a, a scenario that you can relate to and resonate with uh, so this is the one where you know you have a, a counterpart uh, a internal counterpart appear in in Dallas Texas and, and you are uh, in India uh, and then you have this particular scenario and so what we want to know is you you play the role of the delivery lead here and then let us know what some of the choices that you may present. No, 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 no. That's okay. So are we giving them, um, say, uh, a couple of minutes at least? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We should do that. Thanks, Anand. Yeah, Anand has, uh, uh, you know, shared his insight. Thank you very much. That's good. Yeah, spot on. Yes. Yes. Close this here. Just close it. Close it. Sort of drag it down. Just close it. You know, we don't need it because that will flash. So uh, take take about a minute. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think uh, there we have someone. Prioritization to deliver what can be accomplished with the timeline. Mm -hmm. So Krishna, I, I'm, I'm assuming what you're saying is that you'll prioritize some of these things so that uh, you mm -hmm. offer a few different options uh, for that time frame. Okay. Okay. So, so basically, you're all negotiating internally now with your sales Correct. lead. So this is an internal negotiation with sales lead. Yeah. Correct. Of the 30 seconds. Okay. So, um, so anybody, yeah, what are the choices that you will present to the sales yes. executive? Yeah. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, uh, of course, the sales executive has to promise. Uh, he made a promise to the client, right? Correct. And, <laughs> and, isn't and, that uh, what happens often? Yes. Uh, being in sales, yeah. I can, I you, can you relate. Guys, you, guys, <laughs> you guys just go and commit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so I think this is, a, this is about also the salesperson being uh, relatively uh, new. So there's some, some pressure on them to, to deliver, obviously, because their, their worth has to be established within the organization. <clears throat> uh, they, they do feel that, uh, you know, they are also looking for potentially for some cooperation and assistance from the delivery lead to, to make sure. a, a very aggressive deadline. 
So, so, so some of the options, one was prioritization. Uh, anybody else? I mean, want to raise their hand? We'll, we'll activate your mic if that's the case. So if you want to speak through it, to it rather than type it. Um, I think when we, when we role played this uh, earlier, some of the options that came uh, was about uh, negotiating with the sales lead yeah. on, uh, on, on some timeline adjustments. That was another thing that they talked about. So passing we have another we have another answer here. Sorry, can we do that? Let me just uh, pull up the other chat. So there's another response. Let's look at that. We should give option to say as need. Timeline of delivery is sacrosanct, or quality of delivery is important. Or more forces, uh, resources should be required, thus cutting into our own margin. Yeah, so I think that's a really good point, on And I think what you can work with is maybe some some bartering between the sales lead and yourself on 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 margin and on delivery. And uh, so these are all negotiations. So you can do some banking of credits and debits, right? So these are, these are things that you would use, yeah. techniques that you should use. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think I think the 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 what we're highlighting through this case and through the conundrums, what we're really highlighting is the choices that you offer are the real choices even for the other party. Yes, That's especially what, for the sales. Are they really choices for them? Right. That's all that there is to it. And if you're mindful of that, one can negotiate some very good deals. Yeah. Yeah. Deliver some so something Dinesh, faster. Dinesh Dinesh something thing, yeah. Yeah. Deliver some things faster. Okay. Great. Reduce the quantum of work. Gauge the need of the delivery. What do they want to achieve? Good very questions. Good, very, good. very good. Okay. Limit. Uh, delivery with less quality. Delivery in two steps. Increase resources with higher costs. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good options. I would say. Good no, choices. No, no. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Exactly mm -hmm. what we were looking for. So. So I think. I think. I think this is really great to yeah. see. Yeah. Um, this is exa exactly what we mean. So. You know, if you create enough options, then then you can have a conversation around. Yes. You know how. What, why some things may not be an option, some things may be an option, but then you, you get to engage in a dialogue, yeah. right? Uh, and so, you know, without saying an outright no or, or, or just saying absolutely not, uh, or saying yes, which is which also could have ramifications for delivery, uh, you you kind of engage in a, in a conversation and then sure. find maybe in, in, in this whole collaboration, find things that you haven't yeah. And, even thought of. and again, you know, it brings me back to how important is trust. You yeah. know, salesperson is a new person, probably doesn't have much rapport yeah. in the organization. Right. And obviously, uh, you know, delivery could be a little reticent and they could be a little uh, inhibitious of many things. Right. right? And he may so, not have networked yet internally so, to build. So how network. important is trust and uh, openness then? Yes. Yeah, so that, negotiation. that brings us right to the next, uh, next point, Deep. Um, so thank you, everybody, for participating and, and giving us some great feedback there. All right. So uh, we have been talking about uh, distrust and trust. Um, now, what I'm going to share with you is um, a, a concept, and this is also to do with intelligent conversations that we have with the other party, whether it's internal or external. In this case, if it's the client. So always assume, and uh, this is a presupposition in fact, and it's a good presupposition, that there is people and there are situations where there is a fair amount of distrust and there is trust, both. Now, that, that is not equally distributed. There could be more trust, less distrust, yet there is distrust, or there could be a more distrust, depending on the context. What are the context when distrust is greater than trust? The context is a first-time client could be a context, or somebody new, a, a, a lateral hiring, you know, your peer now, but very new to the organization. So there's a bit of a distrust what to share, how much to share. So as you notice, distrust, if we have, this is also for us. Are we coming from a distrust position by default or a trust position by default? We all have our default positions, yeah? We may move, of course, we all move from one to the other, yet there is a journey to be covered and we're coming to that. How do you move somebody from a position of distrust to trust? This is very important. Now. Person with distrust, if you just read through the slide, uh, you know, sees reality through mostly threats, fears, uh, inhibitions, and then they close down, they reveal less, all of that, right? Person with trust will be more revealing. Uh, they assume the best, they interpret with facts, they tell the truth, they don't keep secrets. 
Now, when you observe a person doing either one of these, the first thing that would come to your mind is, aha, how much do I need to move the person? If, if they are showing signs of distrust, then you know there's a conversation to be had there, which actually is what we are really saying between the two parties. So this is what uh, we have here. So there is an I, so any conversation or negotiation, uh, yeah, that's good, that's good. So any conversation or negotiation starts with I and you, right? Now, by the time the negotiation really happens, i.e. the relationship with Bill, that's when it is the we. So I and you need to become we basically in a negotiation. So when you talk of distrust and trust, uh, you, there will be reluctance. So if you notice reluctance from reluctance, you need to take the party to skeptic. You can't take a party state to co-create because people want to wait and watch. So, but Lavi, don't we normally end up then doing that? Uh, we, we push our agenda so much. Mm -hmm. And Lavi, would it be fair to say that only creates more distrust? Cor correct. Just ask. Absolutely. Yes. And I think, you know, if you don't understand this continuum, Hmm. I think there is a, uh, you know, there's a risk in negotiation whereby, you know, you're trying to establish trust and yeah. your own aggression and, uh, and, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, let's say attitude is going to actually cause a situation of distrust. Yeah. So I think it's really important in negotiations to, to understand where yeah. the, the, as you said very clearly, what, where do we begin? Well, do sure. we begin in a distrust, trust or a combination? You know, what, what parameters... Uh, in this continuum, yes. and and some things you know may en engender trust, right? So they must, they might trust you to to deliver a high quality product, but they might not trust you uh, if, if, with your estimations or with speed, maybe. or with speed, right? So that, so yeah, sure. so it's not you know it's not like oh you, you know errors, it's, correct? Okay. So 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 understanding those mm -hmm. things, uh, and when we talk about preparation, we'll we'll get into this a little bit sure. more. So is free. <laughs> Thanks, Ravi. So typically, we reinforce. Bring there is how does this whole piece happen? How do you shift from trust, uh, uh, from distrust to trust, through conversations? Those are called intelligent conversations. Where you start presenting data, where you start presenting more information to bring the party from reluctance to a skeptic position. Skeptic is okay. Uh, I now get it, but I'm a little wary. Then aha, now I've got it. We're going to go with it, but we'll wait and watch before we give a larger order or before we engage you, Ericent, with a larger contract or for other skills that we're looking at, right? So we'll wait and watch. Now tell me, how important is that period, Lavi, with a POC? End of the day, it's a POC. Sort of, yeah. How important is that then to even bring them to a co-creator? Then you start co-creating with a client. Mm -hmm. So that period is the very, most important. Very, very true, so yeah. from wait and watch, it could go either ways. They could have a great experience and experiment more with you, or they could go back to skeptic and reluctant. That's right. the point we are making. Yes. So this is the wait and watch is the most critical part. And all of this happens through openness, through trust, through, through uh, uh, engaging, through listening, through listening to others. Correct. Yeah. Hence the, the, so, the, the, the conversations. Yeah. So it's, it's both, you're right. It's both the software and the hardware right. that come into play here. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. Let's move on. So um, the next uh, uh, thing we want to introduce is actually our framework, right? So, so the framework that we've established that we calibrate for negotiations, and this is what will um, continue to be the, the focus of our conversations from now till, till uh, the end of part two as well. So our framework, the way I would like you to visualize uh, this framework is to actually think of a building. Right, and uh, not a not like a one-story house, but maybe a multi-story building. Right. So, if you were to visualize our framework as that, so the first thing that when when one builds a building, and especially a large one, my assumption here is that you're you're not doing uh, these negotiations for a quick uh, one-off uh, engagement. You're trying to build a long-term, one-year, two-year, ten-year, you know, uh, relationship profitable, mutually profitable, mutually beneficial relationship with the client. So the foundation then of this building, of this skyscraper that you're trying to build, becomes very key, 
right? So that foundation, the preparing of the concrete, the excavations that you do, uh, you know, waiting for things to cure, uh, all of that. I mean, you know, everybody knows in, in construction that the foundation, uh, the size and the strength of the foundation allows the, the building to, to evolve. So, 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 Lavi, then, this is critical. So now, obviously, we always don't get a chance to start from scratch with a client. This could be a current client of Harrison. Correct. Or if it's internal, you know, you have a historical background with a person or a group of people. Mm -hmm. You have good experiences, Lavi, and you have bad experiences. Right. But then that's the foundation we're talking yeah. about, isn't it? Yeah. What yeah. is that foundation? Yeah. So you can, yeah, so what is that foundation? And then there's nothing to say that you can't reinforce the foundation. Yeah, you I can am. redo the foundation, restart yeah. the foundation, right? But it's still important to know that to reinforce or restart is a long shot. Oh, yes. That so, means that means starting on a great solid foundation is key. Is key. Is key. Okay, in so all negotiations. In and then uh, people do blame many things on many things. They don't realize, mate, how was your foundation yeah. with the client? How did you start? Where did you start? Where did you start? Where did you start? Okay, great, great. So, so the next part of this, uh, obviously, is the walls and the floors, right? So once the foundation is in place, you start to build the rest of the building out. So the second stage is that you start putting the columns, you start putting the floors, uh, and, and you start building on, on this edifice that you're trying to build, which is, in our opinion, a longer term, profitable uh, relationship with your, with your client. Uh, sorry, and the next, then of course, is you start to put the doors, the windows, right, the fit out uh, uh, of the exterior of the building. And then finally, it's the interior fit out, right? The, so you put all the plumbing, the air conditioning, right? The walls are painted and, so, and, and the shine is there, right? And you have a you know, sparkling building. All right. So, so where does the negotiation happen then, Lavi? That's the question. Does it happen at uh, stage so four? We have a poll. Or stage three? We have a poll. <laughs> we have a poll. <laughs> where do negotiations happen? Yeah. Okay. So if you were taking this, this, you know, this visual that I just painted of a, of a, of a building in construction, um, I want to then, we, we will overlay that with kind of our four stage value model, right? So, and that is stage one is essentially preparation information gathering. It's just the foundation of the, our negotiation process or approach, right? Then of course, there's stage two, multiple discussions, internal, external with the client, back and forth, right? A lot of, lot of conversations around stage two. Then we do, you know, what, what we are calling value added, value add through insights. And then finally, the, the negotiating for a mutual win-win. Now, from today's perspective, from today's, uh, uh, we will only discuss stage one, stage two, three, and four, uh, for part two, uh, which is to follow. Sure. So, so the focus really here is going to be on, on stage one. Um, so that's what we will talk about, and that's about preparation and information gathering, right? So let's, uh, let's kind of think through this a little bit. So one of the things that I want to make clear, and I think we are drawing a, a, a very strong distinction between <clears throat> kind of the models out there for, for negotiation. So a lot of the stuff that's out there in terms of methods and, and techniques and all that uh, are focused on kind of, uh, you know, old Cold War game theory, right? Where a lot of tactics, of tactics ah, you know, okay. it's like, you know, I'm going to be the winner, you're going to be the loser, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, not right. Kim Young jong and, and Donald Trump kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. There's only one winner, no, you know, uh, that kind of discussion. So those kind of pres presumes that, and also the legal stuff, you know, about, you know, contractual stuff where if you take someone to court, obviously you want your lawyer to, to win. So those kind of, uh, these are zero, those are zero sum games. Mm -hmm. And this is not about that because this is about actually the first step in a long-term relationship. So that we are making an assumption, we clearly are making an assumption that post-negotiation that you are still going to be engaged with this customer, this customer is going to love working with you and that you didn't start, start off on the wrong foot that you didn't beat them up on negotiations. So the rest of the time, they're trying to you know, recoup their losses, shall we say, through the engagement process, right? And, 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 that's, and that typically happens when, when a customer feels like they got the wrong end of the stick mm -hmm. or the wrong part of the deal. So this is not something we're trying to, to achieve here. So our process, our methodology, our framework is a lot to do about creating mutual win-wins, obviously, and a long-term uh, so, relationship. So that's, that's why this is not a, that's not, you know, using kind of what's commonly out there if you kind of Google so, around. And <clears throat> so something like building value from day one. Exactly. Is what is. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's this okay. is a, so from day one, it's, it's a, it's a value building exercise, sure. right? So, so, so if you were to go to, I uh, will take a quick poll. This is to, uh, Deep's, sorry, earlier question. Um, and this, let me just, uh, okay. 
pull the poll up for you. So the question was, uh, so while Lavi is pulling up the poll, when do negotiations then really happen? <clears throat> Which stage of the game? So yeah, so there you go. <clears throat> um, take, uh, we we'll give you about half a minute. Okay, all right. Interesting, I love intro. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, so you see uh, stage uh, three, <laughs> or maximum phase stage three. Uh, okay, uh, are you ending the poll? Okay, so let, let's go ahead and end the poll. We, no, no, we have uh, some more. We have about another four to five participants. If you'd like to come into, uh, we have about 61% who have voted. <coughs> okay, we'll go ahead and end it. <coughs> Sorry. And we'll share the results. All right. So interesting. So a lot of people think it's stage three, uh, stage four. So towards the latter part of the process is negotiation. Mm. Uh, okay, so I think as we go along, this is very interesting. So, I, for, from, so let's put it from our perspective where it begins. So for us, it's actually stage one. Stage one. Right, so stage one is where we, 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 we believe that negotiations begin. In fact, uh, you know, Deep and I were having a bit of an extended conversation yesterday and, and, and Deep said, well, do you truly think it's stage one? I said, actually, I think it's pre-stage one. I think it's when, when the salesperson starts to engage, you're already in negotiations, right? So when the proposal goes out, you've already kind of set some tone, you've, you've set some um, groundwork uh, in perception and that perception yeah, is because when the it starts. The perceptions have started. Yes. The perceived value has started. started. Like, like Lavi, they say, and you know, I think we discussed this in the presence workshop as well, where we had the gravitas and concreteness Correct. that when a person opens his or her mouth, uh, they expose the whole house. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Right. right. So, so exactly. So that's the, that's so. the starting point. And the reason we're making this distinction is that, um, Without the proper foundation, right, and, and, and that foundation is the information gathering and, 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 and preparation, then the rest of it is going to be on a, on a not very stable uh, uh, foundation. And that obviously limits the, the height of the building, right? So a poor foundation means you can't really scale the building up. So, so uh, let's, uh, you know, I think uh, it's, stop uh, we'll stop sharing and, and move on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So you can close it. Close it. So close the poll. All right. Oops, sorry. Okay, so so we're going to talk about uh, the first stage of the um, uh, of the uh, the model here. It's in our value model, and it's really important to kind of understand what what I mean here. So one of the things that we want to uh, ensure that that happens is that the issues and challenges at hand are are, are discussed and are known and are found out. So now, usually, when I say issues and challenges at hand, I think the first kind of thing that comes to people's mind is, oh yeah, the my issues, my challenges, yeah. right? Um, and yes, I think those are important. Uh, they should be known, but equally known and, and uh, no less important is the third party's issues and challenges. Uh, Lavi, in, in my own experience, I haven't seen, hardly seen any people whose first reaction is, okay, what are the issues and challenges of the other party? It's very rare, we encourage and we actually do it and it, it changes the game. Totally. It changes your approach. It changes, uh, so the creativity, the options and choices are far more authentic and superior is what. Absolutely, right? yeah. So really, uh, while th this exercise should, should involve knowing obviously the challenges you, ha you have, what your positions are, but it is equally important, if not more important, to know what the challenges and issues the customer uh, is going to have or you perceive to have. And there, there should be some research there, there should be some data gathering, you should use your resources to find out what those issues and concerns may be, right? Uh, what your competitors may be doing to, to address those issues and challenges, uh, you know, may have, may, maybe they are stronger than you are in addressing some of those things. So this is all about that kind of preparation. The next kind of uh, thing that's important is the outcomes. Now again, here, you need to also put on the other person's hat, right? So it's it's not only the outcomes that you expect, right? Okay, I want the contract signed. I want to have fifty people that's on my bench, uh, you know, engaged in the in the thing. I want this much revenue, this much margin. Yeah, great. But it also is okay. What is the client's outcome, right? So I think in a rate uh, 
negotiation bargaining, right? I think one thing that we, we, we you made clear and the reason that you were willing to pay a potentially a higher price, or I was willing to pay a higher price, was the issue of quality and um, the meeting of the deadline and how mission critical it was because it's going to be a game changer, all of those things. So knowing that beforehand, knowing that that's an outcome I'm, I'm expecting strengthens so, uh, your negotiation. Position. So, Lavi, I have a point here mm -hmm. now. Do you remember the, the thirst, quenching the thirst yes, example? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, now, what if, what if you, what if uh, Arisent had a certain skill sets that they have, certain capability they already have, they don't have much more than that, but the ask of the client requires that you give more choices, which you may not have at that time. So in the thirst thing, if I was thirsty and you only had a Pepsi or a Coke, what if you'd asked the question, how long can you hold on? So if you can, then we can organize Correct. water for you or a juice for you. We may not have it, but how long? So that becomes a big question there. Correct. Hey, how long can you wait? Instead of just offering the Pepsi and the Coke, because that's what you have. Correct. So, so what do you think of that? Yeah, so exactly. So I think that's why preparation is key, mm -hmm. right? I think that this is the, the point. The, the more you know, uh, the more you've kind of taken the time to understand, uh, the better you're going to be yeah. in your negotiation. And, and not to offer what you have, but to offer what the client is really seeking. Yes. And if they can wait. So those are the quality questions then, yeah. so which in, we will come exactly. to at some point. In yeah. Time. So in practical terms, I mean, in my experience, what I've done is I've had people role play the customer, right? Oh. So for example, like we, we just did, I'll, I'll tell somebody to be Klaus and mm -hmm. I'll say, look, here's what we're proposing, you know, break it down. You know, you, you play that role and, and see what, you know, potentially what they may or may not say. Right. So that you, you at least, you know, you can't be 100% prepared because, you know, it's a human factor there, but you are well prepared, right? So you've, you've mulled through the potentials and when you go into the conversation, you don't get many curveballs. You may get a, a curveball or two thrown at you, but you don't get, a, everything's not a curveball. You go, oops, I know, oops, I didn't know that, oops, I didn't know that. You know, that, that doesn't uh, and build trust <coughs> and trust, it doesn't yeah. uh, uh, engender... Yeah. Yeah. So, confidence. So, Lavi, there's just one thing I <clears throat> want to just introduce to the participants. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a great exercise you all can do. When you all are internally discussing before presenting to the client, uh, when you're discussing mulling options, opportunities, choices, always, and try this, I'd, I'd encourage or invite all of you to go back and experiment. Keep an empty chair. Keep an empty chair in that room and imagine or visualize your client is sitting right there when your discussions are going on. Imagine that's your client. Now see how your discussions would move because your client is present right there. So it's a very powerful activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, yes. The dialogue changes, the mindset changes. Yeah. And that is so huge to build trust and be authentic. Correct. Yeah. So just, just thought it's worth giving it a shot. So we're going to do a, a, a <coughs> three kind of uh, uh, scenarios here. So just... Uh, I will, this will flash up independently in, in the screens to follow. So what I want everybody to do is I've, we've taken kind of three scenarios uh, for you based on, and I know a majority of you said in your, in your poll earlier that most of your conversations exactly. are with clients um, as opposed to, uh, and then some had peer to peer. Uh, so, so what we, we've done is three kind of potential scenarios or stories that you are, you can relate to in your, uh, specific roles. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the scenario. We're going to give you a minute, uh, and what we want to, you to do in that in is take that minute and use the chat feature again to kind of list back to us some questions you would ask, right, from yourselves, you know, internally in, in preparation, and from the client, right, uh, for the for for this uh, negotiation for the next stage, right. Sure. So. Uh, so take the time to do that. Uh, the emphasis here is on quality and not on like a quantity of questions. So, so think through and, and come up with some, some, some questions, sure. one or two or whatever number so, uh, and, and, and do that. So, so a minute for each. Yeah. So what <clears throat> so I'm going to do, do is, client first. yeah, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and do the first one. <clears throat> yeah. So just take a, go ahead and take a minute. Um, and and just question. share your questions through chat. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could have one, <coughs> two, however many, just put down your questions there. What are the questions you will ask? You can first do that on a piece of paper and then um, then uh, go ahead and uh, yeah. uh, show it to us um, later.
Yeah. Okay, I so see. we have, have some uh, <clears throat> questions coming in. Answers coming in. Okay, so, so um, share questions with us. Great, Krishna. I think this is really good. Need to understand what the client... So what are the questions? So just put down the questions you will ask. In the actual follow, you know, the, the so, conversation that you will potentially have post preparation. So, okay, we will get the requirement, but uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, question, uh, only put questions in there. What is the question that you will ask? Okay, what are the deliverables? All right, okay, now that's a question. Great, Sanjay. So, so we will, we will uh, maybe you didn't understand, so we will give you probably another half a minute. Give, you know, share some questions with us. Uh, you know, we have about 18 participants. I mean, come on, four questions is a fair request. I guess. <laughs> At least four of you send us we, some we questions. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's a reasonable request, Lavi? You yeah. know, from 18 participants, so you're only asking for questions. What, what are the needs of products? What are the needs of <laughs> What are the needs of, of product? What are the needs of, of the end customer? customer? Yeah. Not all. Good, okay, good. great. What are the expectations from specific architect or, or program, program manager? manager. Good, yes, question, good question, Krishna. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so we're at, so let's, let's move on. Yeah. So, uh, so some of the questions, close that. Yeah, let's close, close that window. Okay. I'm muted. Okay. So here are some questions <clears throat> uh, that we have here. <clears throat> Lavi, uh, what I noticed was, yes. uh, and, and this is also something, uh, uh, Lavi, I've been really, ex and so have you. Yes. We get a lot of bot questions. Correct. So, so uh, though uh, this, uh, work, uh, this webinar uh, uh, does not leave us with scope to discuss whole brain thinking, now whole brain thinking is a great phenomenon. Uh, so it's a whole, a whole concept, a lot of science behind it, a lot of work is being done on whole brain thinking. We are by asking, so, so by asking what, why, how, that's where we're activating our brain, which has eight dimensions, we'll not get into that. So coming back to questions, uh, why are you specifically seeking the two individuals? Yeah, so we have these questions lobby for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are sample questions sample that you questions know, we, were, we were mulling in terms of using our uh, whole brain thinking uh, uh, things. So Three things that went well. Ask, last ask leading questions. Yeah. So good, good. You all are coming up with great questions. Ask leading questions. Okay. Oh, what are the specific and why do they need specific? Great. Absolutely. So we have asked those questions. So I guess three I things guess that went good. well yeah. last time. It's excellent yeah. question there. Yeah. So, so the gist is to open, ask open questions and ask the why, the what, and the how questions. Yeah. Great. So let's do the other scenario then, right? Scenario two. And uh, so same, same parameters apply. So a minute, um, ladies and gentlemen, shoot us your questions for this one. I mean, uh, what are some questions you can ask yourself actually in this one uh, before we get to the uh, to to asking? So it's more about request. It's more about a request here. Yeah. No worries. Can you just shake it a bit? Okay. Why him? Okay. Why him only and not as someone else? What is the architect mm. doing currently? Yeah. Good question. Why him only? Yeah. What are the specific, specific outcomes? outcomes? Good, okay. Great good outcome question. Great questions to ask ourselves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question. Does he want to come back? <laughs> that, that takes us to the foundation? Yes. Yeah, foundation. Uh, you know, what was the experience with you? <laughs> What are the specific of the project? Yeah. Okay, so I think you guys Good are you, you definitely getting uh, the, now the, the feel for this. Um, so one of the things that maybe you, you, you need to think about, and this is something that uh, you know is, is key to kind of any 
preparation activity that you're doing is to really think about the fact that, you know, in any kind of a negotiation, there can be three potential outcomes. One is, yes, I agree. No, I don't. Right. And so because of those yes and no's, you need to have a counter offer or offers, right? Because remember the choice conundrum. So it's important to know, you know, what your counter offer is in the case of a no, right? So be, being prepared for the no and having a, a potentially one or more options, I would think three is, is and more yeah. is a better option. That's what can I bother someone who just says, yeah. okay, what can I bother? What can right? I give you? Exactly. Right. So, so that's anticipating the no, right? Yeah. So, so Pooja is anticipating the no, therefore yes. she's, She's a counter. What is the counter going to be, right? So it's really key. So a takeaway here is that these preparation conversations, mm -hmm. preparation activities should also very much be focused on potentially uh, creating real choices, sure. real uh, counter offers. Sure. Right. And that's okay. that's the takeaway from from yes. this one. So let's do the next uh, scenario, the last one. There we go. Again, same parameters. Feel free to start uh, opining as soon as uh, yeah, you are ready. Sure. Okay. Can I offer comp off to them? Okay, mm -hmm. Krishna. How can we add more value to customer? Okay. I don't think this will be a negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> How can we add more value to the customer? What can I do for you? So great. Ah, what are they doing over the weekend? How can I help you do that thing at some other time? Okay. Communication to the team to appreciate the requirement followed by incentives. What I can take off. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so excellent. So I, I think you, you have a lot of experience in this area and that shows. Uh, so, so one of the questions you obviously can ask is what would you give up if, if you had to work the weekends or, yes. you know, the next three weekends? So this is, I think, consistent with, you know, uh, your thinking here, which is how can we compensate or yeah. incentivize? Yeah. So and what, think, what would they yeah, give up? I think with this question that we have, Lavi, it takes the person uh, to a place uh, of comfort. So for a manager to ask, okay, what is it you're really giving up? And, and trying to then uh, uh, compensate. Correct. Right? Right. Okay. So if I say, oh, look, I, it's my wife's anniversary mm. and I was planning to take her out for dinner, mm. right? So then, you know, that may be not something that you could say, well, if, if you can, if we can do it in two hours, you know, I'm happy to pump the, the you know, the meal, take her to a fabulous restaurant, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, sure. and if you can come back to work yeah. after that, you know, yeah. that'll be great. I mean, these are things, obviously you have to negotiate yeah. these yeah. things, right? It yeah. might not be a, actually a choice for that person, sure. but, but asking the question opens out the possibilities. Yeah. Maybe they just wanted to hang out and chill out that weekend. And, and yeah. you know, so once you find that out, you can say, well, I'm going to, Comp another weekend or two weekends for you to do that. And, and, and then it takes, is that really a choice for the other? Correct. Is that even a choice? Correct. You know, uh, so, so if you've not been able to relax for two weekends, uh, you don't have, need four straight days to relax either. Okay. So I think the, the what would you give up is a very good Correct. question right. for, for them to know. So great. So I think the what we were, we can miss him about the larger picture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How can manager help you bring faster results? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's another so, one. So, so yeah. how can I increase your productivity? Yeah, I guess support. is the is, uh, is just a pretty there. good questions. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you could close that window, I think. Uh, yeah. The chat thing. So, okay. um, so the, this is some some questions mm. for all three scenarios, additional ones, uh, and I think. Uh, we, we, we will, there is a handout that we did of, of lots of, you know, kind of quality questions and we can, we can post the webinar, uh, send that oh, across yeah, to we you. Could do that. Yeah. We could do we that. Could do that. Um, these are some, so these are some, some here. Mm -hmm. Um, so what is my offer or offers? Remember, mm -hmm. uh, that, that applies in, in most all the scenarios. So it's, it's a key question to, to mm -hmm. answer in your preparation. Uh, based on kind of who you're obviously talking to, if it's client, which most of you seem to be doing, this question, the fourth one, what will be the difference in the client's organization at the, end, at the conclusion of this project is a great question to get, 
clarity on yes. because I think very few clients get asked that from, from vendors yeah. because the vendor is more keen on, on saying, Hey, here's what you can do for me or, or use my product or use my service. Uh, they get lost in, Hey, what impact does my product and service have to you? What would this yeah. mean to you? Yeah. Right. So that I can align myself and my organization and my team to achieving that yeah. objective. Right. So I think that's, that's a very, question. Very good question That's a to very ask. Good question. Um, I mean, obviously, you can do some research around that, and and you can prompt that if the client is reluctant. Says, look, I've read that you recently had some challenges. Uh, some competitors are moving into your space. Is that what's prompting this scenario? And that shows then, wow, you you've actually done some research sure. on my industry. You've done some research mm-hmm. on me. It builds confidence that and, you know you're yeah. not there for a short term thing, right? Lovely. I also think the response to question four on the client side. Uh, that will tell you the value you are bringing. And from there, you could assess the scope of negotiation. Right. So if it's going to make a pretty big enough difference and the client can articulate it, then you know that you can negotiate more. You can negotiate for a greater price. Because the value you're bringing yeah. is higher. Correct. Right? So, so that, simple. that yeah. lays the, lays that the whole uh, sort of you know, expectations kind of thing. Yes. How much will the client stretch? Uh, and I think that's a very good question to ask. Hoping that the clients will be honest about it. <laughs> that's another <laughs> yeah, big one. Right, but then the research should back you up, right? Yeah, yeah. So in the in the remaining ten minutes that we yeah, have, okay. I think we should um, we should open this out for sure. for Q and A, and I think we we end up activating so we, everybody's yes. mic for that one, right? Is no, that how I we think do it? no. What we will do is uh, you could raise your hand, and we will uh, unmute you, and uh, we could then respond to some of your uh, queries. Yeah. So we will just uh, yeah we we'll just wait for you to raise your hand. Uh, any any questions for you that have not been answered? Uh, <coughs> clarification on a point that we made? Uh, what have you? So yeah, take about a minute, two minutes to reflect. Lavi, do we have about six, seven minutes, right? Yeah, we have, we have. We have. Yeah, we have. We have nine minutes. We have about nine minutes for Q and A. We we kept that aside. And feel free, I mean, if you want, if you can think of any insights that you've get gotten from today's session. Uh, okay. So Anil, Anil has, uh, has raised his hand. Uh, yeah, allowed to talk. Okay. Uh, I'll do. No, no, one sec, one sec, I got it. Okay, so just a second, Anil. Wait a sec. All right, Anil, I think... Uh, Uh, let me see, Anil. I'm going to just take you out of. Uh, let me just take out of uh, side view here for a second. I'm oh, sorry. No worries. Uh, yeah. Let me just do the this on the. Okay, the screen screen is up. Okay, just so okay here. Love it. You're okay. Just. Uh, Anil, uh, here you go. Hello. Uh, yeah. Here, here go. you go. You can now speak, Anil. Go ahead. Yeah, Anil. Uh, go on. Yes, Anil. Go ahead, Anil. You should be able to hear uh, to speak now. Anil, was it Anil? No. Anil, did you just? No. Uh, no. So you got a panel list. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Go. Yes, yeah, we I can, can hear you. you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Apologies, it was mute. Good morning. Okay. Yeah, good, good morning. Ahead. Good morning. Yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, thanks a lot for uh, giving that insight. I was just, uh, uh, let me say, contemplating the thought which you talked about uh, uh, having a chair for customer in the same room and start talking about uh, what uh, what will be a typical dialogue between you and your customer, right? Now, I've got uh, uh, first of all my view, and then I want to just take your help in terms of understanding what is the basic. Uh, a rule behind it and why, why it works. Right? So the thought, thought is, let's see, if I put a chair for my customer in, in a room, right, and I start talking about it, ultimately I am reflecting myself as a customer, right? Uh, that's, that's my first view. So how it really helps in, in reflecting customers view when I do this exercise, right? So I need your help at least in terms of understanding the basic, uh, what do you say, uh, content or a core behind it. That's what he asked. Yeah. Yes. So I think uh, Deep will, will take, yeah. a, take so, a step at it. So I, I Anil, can Anil uh, putting a chair out there, the essence about it is being conscious uh, of your customer. It makes you very conscious of your customer. That's right. what it really does. So when you're conscious of your customer, then right. your way of thinking 
and the dialogues could be more generative and more value add. And you would be looking also from the other person's perspective. That's the biggest take from this. Okay. What was the other question, Anil? But I think it was, it was the, it, uh, I was reflecting more in a sense, like when I say uh, I'm talking to the customer, ultimately when I'm talking to the customer in the same room on a different chair, as even the as customer on a different chair, I'm reflecting myself. So my question was primarily to understand how I'm reflecting customer's view in that chat primarily. Yeah, the very fact that the customer is there, imaginary customer, you're uh -huh. conscious that you not get the customer's views yet but just to form your views you will be more mindful of what you suggest or recommend or propose right uh, so so that's what um, so think about the customer not being there what are the conversations we normally have sometimes they could be more towards us hey what's in it for us no we cannot do that uh, i think the customer is asking for too much here i think the customer is being unreasonable yes. and i think with the customer sitting there you will not say all that which means you will come up with better options. Is yes, that, yes. that that's yeah, it's, it's like a, you know, it's like a, in, in, sometimes in meditation, when you're doing spiritual things, you have an object in front yeah. to, to, you know, take your mind there easier, yeah. right? So it's, these are, these are little uh, psychological tricks that you can do. Similarly, if you des designate somebody in your team to be the customer, right? So tell them to go and, and do the research like they would a, a customer and be the customer in the meeting. Obviously that also adds because then they will take on the role of the customer. They'll take on that persona. So their voice will be heard. This is all about kind of making sure that when you're going into a, a conversation, uh, and I'm, I'm prefacing this by saying it's a, it's a longer term engaged conversation as yeah. you're going back and forth, that th these always count when you, when you, in your preparation. Sure. So Good. anybody else yeah. want to add? And uh, Anil, I Thanks, Anil. That, um, that trust that clarity. Yeah, okay. uh, thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, anybody else raising their hands? So any share? questions, queries, comments, feedback? Oh, wow. Okay, Dinesh. Okay, Dinesh allowed to talk. Yes, you can go, Dinesh. Yeah. So Dinesh, you can talk. Yes, I we think can. I unmuted. I hope you can hear me. Yes, Dinesh. Yes. Loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, hi, Lavi. Hi, Deep. Uh, thanks for the uh, lecture. Uh, uh, one question uh, is uh, we talked about uh, negotiating on the content of the work which uh, we are supposed to be delivering to the customer. Uh, how much do you think that? The person you are negotiating with that carries a weight in the negotiation itself. So understanding uh, the customer itself, uh, maybe what personal choices he has, what are the likes, dislikes, the gender, the nationality. How much do you think that plays a role in the negotiation? Great, Dinesh. I, I think that's that, yeah. That I think uh, I'm glad you you brought attention to that fact. I think it's really crucial to understand who you are, uh, and and that's why, again, I think the preparation to know the person who's going to be on other land. I mean, you know, minimally, of course, going to LinkedIn, Google them. Um, if you have your net uh, a good network. Uh, you know, maybe speak to people in your network and say, hey, I'm going to talk to Klaus. Uh, do you know anything about Klaus? Uh, you know, what kind of a person is he? You know, uh, if you know people or friends, right? Uh, talking to them, not in a kind of a, tell me all the gory details, but, but just to understand what kind of a personality, what makes them click and what their background may have been, which previous companies they may have worked at. All of those things and count. Lavi, in addition, in addition, uh, uh, Dinesh, Remember, we did the whole distrust to trust. This is where, this is exactly what we meant. They could start from a distrust uh, uh, position, especially when you say uh, different cultures, uh, remotely, never engage with them. So yes, context is important. Yeah. And I think the whole continuum, Alavi, we mm -hmm. discussed, if they're already in a place where it's wait and watch, then of course, uh, you know, you've already uh, halfway there. But if you're starting from reluctance, yes. and then you need to know more about them, have more conversations, be more open. Yeah. Build okay. more trust, build yeah. more uh, rapport. Yeah. Great, Dinesh. Thank you. So, Dinesh, uh, trust that helps because we are talking. So, we won't be able to. Uh, 
Yes, that helps. Uh, thanks. Great. Anisha, um, anybody else who wants to? I think we have, we have one minute. So, Anisha, you can talk. Uh, thank you so much, Deep and Lavi. Um, I think I thoroughly enjoyed the session. Um, the other thing that, and my request to all of you is, if you could please share the attendance status with me, I would require it for my uh, record keeping. So we will do that, Anisha. Vishal will shoot it off because we already have the list here. Uh, we will just shoot it off to you. Is that does sure. that help? We'll shoot it straight that up. That definitely helps. Thank you so much. We already have that here. Okay, everybody. Uh, thank you so much mm -hmm. for uh, starting your mornings uh, with us. Uh, we are looking forward to part two um, where, when we do this in May. Um, so thanks again for, for kindly uh, engaging with us interactively uh, on various media, mediums, chat, and, and also uh, uh, on voice. Um, so looking forward to it and uh, for the next session. Uh, have a great rest of the week and uh, hope to see you and, and speak with you soon. Thank All you. right. Thank you very much again for being a participative audience. audience. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one with all the other three remaining stages. Uh, thank you once again.